fruit spotting bug currently impacts over 25 known horticultural crops and is the number one pest for macadamia in Australia. The entomology team at New South Wales Department of Primary Industries at Wallingbar are currently leading a multi-industry project on the pest, funded by research and development levies from the avocado, macadamia, lychee, papaya, passion fruit and custard apple industries, with additional funding from the Across Industry Committee and matched by the Australian Government through Horticulture Australia Limited. The project will give industry a better understanding of fruit spotting bug, its life cycle and control. Ruth Hoover, research entomologist at New South Wales DPI, has been looking at the damage that fruit spotting bug causes to a number of crops across horticulture and the potential cost of the damage. The damage fruit spotting bug causes is uh, marking the fruit that can't be sold afterwards or in the early stages uh, it's abortion from, of immature fruit. It is very difficult to get a number on the exact costs for um, Australian horticultural industries in uh, in general, but it's estimated to be in the tens of millions of dollars. Um, we've got more exact numbers for the macadamia industry. It's estimated to be 8.9 million dollars per annum. This includes um, higher cost for crop management, for chemical input, for less loss in crop, uh, loss in kernel recovery, uh, higher sorting costs at the processes. We've got records of 90% uh, damage in untreated avocados in southeast Queensland and uh, in our trials we found 70% damage in untreated macadamias. Ian Perdue is a technical officer for the entomology team. Ian has had many years experience working both in the lab and the field. In order to do the research, he makes sure that the populations of fruit spotting bug are bred up in the lab environment in large numbers. Ian explains the life cycle of the bug. The life cycle of the spotting bug starts with the egg, which is light green in colour, luminous and laid singly. The nymph stages, are, there's five stages. The first nymph stage, the insect has white socks on its legs with a green body. The next two nymph stages, the insect loses its white socks, is an orange coloured with two spots on its back. In the fourth nymph stage, the wings have begun to develop and the antenna are bulging. In the fifth nymph stage, the wing buds have fully developed and the insect has become a green coloured with two spots on its back. The next stage, it is an adult, which is green coloured. The difference between fruit spotting bug natida and banana spotting bug lutescens is that lutescens has a white halo around the two black spots on its back. Craig Maddox is also a member of the DPI entomology team. Craig is a technical officer with vast experience in pest movements through the orchard and timing of damage and control. Craig discusses where the pest comes from. They're normally found on the margins of most orchards. They're a true canopy bugs, so they can fly in. They've got a lot of external hosts. Most uh, macadamia avocado growers would be looking around the perimeters first, normally the earlier varieties in the season of where you see them first. So in terms of seasonal movement, if you like, um, the, the bug itself has quite a few generations during the season, probably four to five down this way for fruit spotting bug, and maybe in one more up north where you've got both species. But they will move from crop to crop. So as different things come on in terms of maturity, you know, macadamias have shell hardening happening. Uh, you've got uh, a period where some varieties might be unpalatable, if you like doesn't mean they can't feed on them but there'll be better things around so you know avocados have the problem of being susceptible if you like the whole season uh, custard apples as well um, mangoes you've got that short window around flowering where you might find as the fruit are very small coming through that's when they like custard apples as well there's a phenology if you like for different crops and we've certainly used that for trap cropping down the line we've found 
you know, longans, you only get them in that period, sort of January, February. Other crops, like avocados, you could actually see them all, all season round. Okay, this, this is a pretty good example of a high pressure macadamia site, if you like. We've got uh, an orchard in very close proximity to native bushland, native scrub and rainforest in this case. Uh, you'll find that leads to easy access for the bugs. And even when they are managed or controlled, you've got quite a strong source outside the orchard where you can have continual reinfestation. So you'd be looking for, uh, this, this would be your classic hotspot, if you like, to monitor in an orchard. You'd know the pressure would be high here and it's likely to remain high throughout the season. Usually uh, in macadamias, we, we look for fall and nut in the early part of the season. Uh, what happens is when the bugs feed, normally in the tops of the trees, those nuts uh, will uh, fall quite quickly. As the season progresses up till mid, late December, those nuts keep dropping when they've been fed. After that point, they stay, and that's where we're having difficulties with monitoring later in the season. You actually have to be in the top of the tree. But in that early part, the crop scouts or the um, growers basically walk through the orchard, seeing trees with excessive carpet of drop green nut. They're looking at that, they're cutting those in half, looking for fresh damage on the um, kernel. Or in the, you can see the marks in the shell, husk or kernel, when you cut them open. There's a set level that varies between consultants as to what their thresholds are, but usually there's an action level at which they would then apply a spray. So the monitoring is critical in terms of timing when you want to do it. Uh, we do know there's a couple of generations of spotting bugs go through in the spring period and that's sort of what you're trying to minimise. Uh, in avocados, the monitoring is a little bit more uh, frequent. You have to, I mean the macadamia one is weekly, you'd imagine you'd be out there weekly. Uh, in, in avocados you probably need to be out there the same frequency but you you do need to be in the canopies of those trees. So if you've got larger trees, you would need an afron or a cherry picker or something like that to be around and actually seeing where the, where the, um, the damage is occurring and you're probably seeing the bugs doing the job on the plant. You know, there's usually a fresh sap wound or something like that. And you can see that on macadamia occasionally if you're there. When it's just happening, you'll see the watermarks on the outside, but it's rare. Um, I think the damage becomes later and later for uh, macadamias. You'll find the, the timing between when, you, when the damage has actually occurred and when it's dropped off becomes later and later. So you actually can be lagging too far behind with your treatments later in the season. And that's where, the, particularly around Christmas time, the, the numbers of bugs moving through the orchards can be quite high and you won't see that reflected on the ground. So that's when the, the levels, you need to know whether they're around at that particular time. This video has given you an introduction to fruit spotting bug, its life cycle and the damage it causes. The next in the series of videos will outline current research being used by the project team, looking at better ways to control fruit spotting bug. Some of these methods include trap cropping, pheromone lures, biological control options and new developments in chemical control.